Welcome to section 2 of chapter 3. Today we're going to use parallel lines and transversals. So in the first video, we learned about all the different types of angles created by transversals. Today we're going to learn about some of the properties, and then we're going to introduce parallel lines as well. You should be on pages 7 and 8 in your packet. So properties for parallel lines cut by a transversal. So if I just stop right there, remember parallel lines are a constant distance apart. They're not going to intersect. So those are parallel. Here's my transversal. Corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so that's just angles in the same spot. So angles 1 and 2 would be congruent. They're both above the line and to the left of the transversal. Alternate interior angles are also congruent. So the alternate interior to 2 would be 3. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, and then they're in between the two lines. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Alternate exterior angles are also congruent. So looking at 1, 4 would be the alternate exterior. They're both outside the two lines on different sides of the transversal. So angle 1 would be congruent to angle 4. And then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So these are the ones that are different. Consecutive angles, are, interior angles are supplementary. So that would be like 3 and 5. They're both interior, but they're same, the same side of the transversal. So angle 3 at angle 5 would equal 180 degrees. So everything that we're going to do today is going to be based off of these properties. So I'm going to move this a little bit. Okay, so let's look at example one. It says, in the figure below, angle B is parallel to angle K. So I'm going to mark that. Okay, angle one is 75 degrees. And then it asks you to find angles four and five. Okay, let's start by finding four. Well, I'll notice that angles one and four form a linear pair. They form a straight angle. So angle one add angle four is equal to 180. They're not a special angle pair. You know, we call them a linear pair, but they're not corresponding, they're not alternate interior, they're not alternate exterior, or any of those special terms. So angle 1 is 75, add angle 4 equals 180. If I subtract 75, I get angle 4 is equal to 105 degrees. Okay, now if I'm looking at 1 and 5. 1 is above the transversal and to the right. 5 is above and to the right. These two are consecutive angles. Now if I look up here at the top, or they're corresponding angles, I'm sorry, I misspoke. They're both in the same spot, so they're corresponding. Corresponding angles are congruent, so that means that angle 1 is going to be congruent to angle 5. So if angle 1 is 75, angle 5 also has to be 75 degrees. Sorry, so angle 4 is 105. Angle 5 is 75. And just as a way to check, angles 4 and 5 are consecutive interior angles. They're inside the line and then they're both to the right of the transversal. Looking at the properties, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. And yes, it's true that 105 at 75 is 180. Okay, so now I'm going to the, the second part of example 1, which involves the same figure. Okay, this time, angle 6 is 123 degrees. And you are asked to find angles 2 and 3. If you could right now, pause the video and try this one on your own, please. Okay, you should have noticed that angles 2 and 6 are corresponding. They're both above the line to the left of the transversal, so they are going to be congruent. If angle 6 is 123, angle 2 is also 123. And now you'll notice we have a linear pair again. So 123 add angle 3 is equal to 180. So get angle 3 is equal to 57 degrees. You also could have noticed that angles 3 and 6 are consecutive interior, so they're going to be supplementary as well. So hopefully that one went well for you. If not, hopefully you see the mistake that you made. Okay, example 2. This one's difficult. So I give you angle 65 degrees. You have to find all the other angles. 
So first thing that I know is that this angle is also 65 degrees. That's because we have vertical angles. Okay, now this angle is corresponding to this angle. We know that corresponding angles are congruent. So that means they're both 65. And again, I have vertical angles here. Okay, now I'm going to try to find this angle here. Well, I know that this is a linear pair, so they're going to be supplementary. So I'm going to take x, add 65 is equal to 180. So I get x to be 115. So this angle is 115, which means this angle is 115 because they're vertical angles. Next thing that I notice is this angle corresponds to this angle. So 115, and again I have vertical angles as well. So that was it. One thing to notice is these properties are only true when the lines are parallel. Lines have to be parallel. Okay, so that was page 7. If you can now flip to page 8, please. Okay, so now we're going to throw some algebra in. It says, in the figure below, B is parallel to K. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to mark them parallel. Angle 3 is 68 degrees. And angle 2 is 2x plus 4. I need to find the value of x. Okay, so we have some hints here. It says, when solving problems involving a transversal, figure out which pair of angles you have. Well, at this point, 2 is above the line and to the left of the transversal. 3 is below and to the left of the transversal. These do not form a special angle pair of any type. So I'm going to have to move some things around. First thing I notice is that this angle is also 68 by vertical angles. And this angle is 2x add 4 by vertical angles. Now, knowing that this angle and this angle are consecutive interior angles. They're inside the two lines, and they're on the same side of the transversal. Looking back at the properties, consecutive interior angles are the only ones that are supplementary. So I'm going to take 68, I'm going to add 2x plus 4, and I'm going to set it equal to 180. Combining like terms, I get 72 add 2x equals 180. So 2x equals 108, and then x equals 54. And that's my final answer. Because we were only asked to find x. We're going to do one more example, and then you're going to find one on, then you're going to complete one on your own, please. So looking at example four, it says use the figure and the properties of parallel lines to find the value of x. Okay, so again, looking at these angles, do they form a special pair? No, they do not. So I'm going to have to do some moving around again. In this case, angle 4 is also 115 degrees because of vertical angles. Now I have these two angles, which are consecutive interior angles, both inside the same side of the transversal, so they're going to be supplementary. So I have 115 add x add 5 is equal to 180. 115 and 5 is 120. Subtracting 120, I get x equals 60. Okay, right now, pause the video and try this one on your own. You first need to identify what type of angles you have. So do you have consecutive interior? Do you have alternate interior? Do you have alternate exterior? And then use that property to set up an equation. When you are completely finished with the problem, come back and we will go over it together. Okay, so hopefully you took a chance to try this one on your own. What you should have noticed is that you have alternate interior angles. So I'm going to write that as AIA. They're on different sides of the transversal, but they're both on the inside of the two lines. Now, from the properties that I gave you before, alternate interior angles are congruent. So you're going to do 4x add 6 equals 92. Then when you solve that, you get x equals 43 over 2, which is 21.5. So if you did not get that right, that's okay. Go back and fix your mistake, please. Okay, so moving down. It says, did we accomplish the objective? So today we were going to find angle measures using parallel lines and transversals. It says, in the figure, angle 3 is 3x add 15, and angle 8 is x add 100. Find the value of x, and then calculate the measure of angle 
four. Sorry, this should be a fifteen. Okay, so right now, what you need to do is you need to identify what type of angles do you have. Okay, so both of these angles are below their respective lines and to the left of the transversals. So identify the angle pair and set up an equation. You should have two answers. One, you should find the value of x, and then you need to find the value of angle 4. Good luck.